to this wonderful seminar. We hope uh, to be a very nice seminar. It will be on global education and interculturality in e twinning. And our dear speaker is Rosanne Camilleri, and I will introduce her in a few minutes. But before, I would like to give you some instructions. So if you want to speak, uh, we will need to unmute you, so you cannot unmute your microphone by yourself. Uh, I'll need to do that. So if you want to speak, if you want to participate, you need to click on that hand and raise your hand, okay? If you want to express your emotions, say if that you agree or disagree, you can use the green and the red symbols and also use the emoticons. Uh, you have also those little uh, symbols before the emoticons. Uh, that means means that uh, you can tell us to go slower or go faster, whatever you need. Okay. So, more instructions. So, if you have problems with sound, uh, we recommend you to change to headsets if you don't if you are not using it. Uh, if you are using it and it still doesn't work, you may need to uh, do the test, the audio test, and just follow those instructions. Click on audio on the top bar and click on speaker microphone and audio test. If it still does not work, uh, you may need to try to leave the session and come back again. Okay, we are still in a good number. Your seat will be safe for sure. So now about our speaker. Our speaker is a very special speaker because she's an e-tweener for a long time and she's currently an e-learning support teacher visiting primary schools in Malta and she also supports teachers in their use of, uh, sorry, in their use and curricular integration of technology. And she is regularly also involved in professional development and training for school staff. In eTwinning, she is a, she works as a support teacher as well as an eTwinning ambassador, and she helps teachers in eTwinning projects, registrations, and professional development, including uh, this kind of uh, seminars that we are doing now today. But uh, I'm sure she will talk about um, she will talk about herself a little bit more in a, in the course of her presentation. So with no further delays, uh, I will give her the, ro the, the ball and she can uh, introduce you to this wonderful topic. Okay, well, welcome everyone. It's very exciting to see so many people here and so many people interested in the subject of global education which has enticed me lately very much, so much so I'm researching it quite extensively. Um, so let's get down to what we're here for. Um, I can see that a lot of you are new to webinars and uh, uh, these kind of seminars. I can tell you that they are, they are very interesting. When I was still a new it winner, I would find them very interesting and very informative. Well, I am, uh, as, as Ruth has said, uh, she gave me a very good introduction. This is something very general um, about my education. I'm going to skip those, don't need to say anymore. And uh, um, at the moment, I'm doing uh, a PhD program with Lancaster University. And I'm a mother of two teenagers, so I know what it means to juggle between family and home and school and everything, and my studies as well. So, first of all, so you've heard a lot about me, about DC training seminars, and I'd like to hear something about you. Um, I'm going to share a link on the Titan pad and there, I want you to write um, where you come from. You just 
uh, all you have to do when you open, I'm going to put the, the link in the chat area, and then you will you will see the Titan pad open, and there is a box where you can put in your name. You put in your name, and then on the other side, you can start putting in your comments. So we get a, a range of ideas of, from, from where you are, uh, the students you teach, if you teach primary, if you teach secondary, and if maybe there are any expectations. If the more you keep it simple, the better because of the large number that we are, we can't keep track of what is everyone is saying. So, um, uh, as I can see, Ruth has already put the link in the chat, so you can, can go there and start putting in, click on this, that, that link, and it will take you to the link. And then we'll have a, I'll, I'll give you some time and then we'll see what everyone is saying. Well, you are very fast. <laughs> very fast. And very interesting. From Georgia, Turkey, Albania, Azerbaijan. <laughs> Secondary, primary. Croatia, Greece. Spain. So we can continue now. Um, issues we will be covering today. Um, we'll be talking about globalization. We'll see what this means, what global education means, and what interculturality means as well. Why this interest in global education? And how to prepare students for a globalized society um, introducing the 21st century skills? integrating it winning with all of this and the challenges we are facing. So this is another, something we can either skip or um, either you can write it in the chat if it doesn't work. So we'll put the, um, the link there so you can now go to another TitanPad link and tell us what you think. What edu global education means for you? As I, uh, um, I have this impression that a lot of teachers have never really thought of, of this word, and maybe they've never been introduced to it, so they don't really know what it means. So if you don't know, don't worry, just say so. So I have an idea um, where we are. Okay, so there is the link. I'll just in case put it up again. Sorry, Rosan. Some people are having problems with it and pad. Maybe they can just write their opinions in the chat. Yeah. Is that they okay? In the chat, yes, that's yeah. fine. It's no problem. Okay. Okay. No problem at all. So please uh, answer uh, Rosan's question in the chat box. If you have any idea what global education is, there are very interesting comments here. And even in the chat, I'm seeing a lot of interesting comments. The unity in curriculum or around European countries and achieving the same goals. Uh -huh. Preparing pupils for the new world. Exactly. Change the learning environment for sharing. So again, while Rosanne is reading, uh, if you want to share your opinion about global education and you are having problems with TITANPED, you may uh, write your opinions on the chat box. Sharing current techniques and methods, and methods. The learning process based on universal values, yes, teaching cultural awareness, interaction between different civilizations, bringing, uh -huh. collaboration, we live together without discrimination is a very important point, and learning from each other. I'm trying to get some uh, meaning from you, and then we can carry on with some formal ones. Collaborate with the mm -hmm. of interaction and integration, exactly. Okay, I think we can carry on now. I think it will be enough. So we can uh, um, discuss some more issues. 
uh, globalization is, is in, in its whole entity is a phenomenon taking place all across the globe as people of different nations communicate and interact more efficiently through technology. And this is something which we are seeing today, which probably wasn't there before, especially when we were very young. It was there, but it was still very um, in its early days. And today it has really grown with the increase of technology all across the globe. And so it, it is something that we must pay attention to. We have to give it enough consideration because it is, it's becoming very important, especially for our pupils who are going to face this world when they grow up. Is everyone uh, hearing me? Am I okay? Yes, Rosanne, you may carry Can on. Put a smile? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, global education. Now, I'm going to use another term. Now, global education, then, now we're going to go into the field of education. The international issues and diverse cultures are increasingly being introduced in the classroom, becoming global citizens, which we hear of a lot, learning 21st century skills, those we will talk about later on, and interculturality, which is the interaction of people from different cultural backgrounds, interacting each other, using authentic language appropriately, in a way which demonstrates knowledge and understanding of their cultures, which means that they are, when they are brought together, either even we we see it happening during the training projects you can see not only pupils and students interacting but also teachers even here we are interacting even here it's an intercultural seminar because we are talking about our, the different weather in different countries we are interacting we so there is a knowledge and understanding and this is important that we we instill in children from a very early age this awareness that that there are other people with other kinds of culture, other traditions, and other ways of ways of life. Yet we are the same everywhere you go, even though everyone might have their little differences. But we are all the same. We have all the same needs. When you start mingling with these type, kinds of people, you realize that everyone is the same everywhere. <laughs> so it's the ability to experience the culture of another person, to be open-minded. This is what will be, it, that's why global education is important because we are instilling in very young people the ability and nurturing this, uh, um, this way of uh, thinking, to be open-minded, interested and curious about that person and that culture. Now, what is global education from the scholar's point of view? From scholar's point of view, they perceive this as incorporating multiple perspectives, as I was saying, so they're going to start to look at people from different points of view. When you know nothing, as I'm going to take the example of when I was little. I I barely knew that there were other countries when I was very little. Let alone maybe if someone said um, there is a place called Bulgaria, I would have imagined it very far and no idea what what the people look like or if they're different. But because the technology is helping us, children can realize that there are multiple perspectives the comprehension and appreciation of cultures, the knowledge of global issues, that they know that certain things are happening in the world, so they are aware. The world as interrelated systems. This is how the, the scholars see it. The face of education today has changed dramatically. Students are facing a global society when they grow up, which is interconnected. It isn't anymore the, um, the situation where you have a child who is born in France and they most probably 
in their old age be still in France. Most probably in our in our society, these children will move, they will migrate, they will go to different countries, either for education, for holiday purposes, to live abroad. They go they marry abroad, they go somewhere else. So most probably they are not going to remain in their place where they were born as it was years ago. Today, that's what I want to mean when I say that education is changing and global society is, it's, it's an, an interconnected society. And thus, the importance of global education in curricula, that's why it's important that global education is integrated into the curriculum. And as somebody said in the chat, um, global education isn't a subject on its own. It can't be something on its own. It's something which is integrated into what we do. Now, the elements, we're going to look, have a look at the elements which make up global education and 21st century skills. First of all, there's the flexibility to adapt to changing technologies because when children at school are learning new technologies, they're learning to adapt and change to different technologies, which will help them later on in life, as we said, because the world is getting more connected. It encourages critical thinking, which is very important and which would later on even enable more peace because when you are thinking critically from a very early age, you, do, you are not letting media um, influence you without proper thinking. You know that it, it's not um, for some people, especially those who haven't had a proper education, um, uh, anything on the media is right. But they have to start to learn that not everything is right. And the media just um, sometimes projects things as, as they want people to think. But we have to teach children how to um, think critically about what they are uh, seeing and what they are hearing. They have to see what's the reason behind this. Is it true? Let me look at other sources. This is the critical thinking which we have to instill in children from a very early age, even down to kindergarten. It is possible. You have to teach them from a very early age. This doesn't happen overnight. It's a, a gradual process. Um, the, the skills involve problem solving, global awareness, and justice, as I, as I was saying, social responsibility, they take responsibility for certain actions. Human rights comes in, peace is one of the effects of this. If the children, the more they are aware, the more uh, peace is, is, um, will, be, will be happening. Open-mindedness and resistance to stereotyping because the more they get to know each other, the more they are, they tend, for example, in some training projects, um, uh, there were children who were thinking that, for example, uh, someone from, uh, let me take the example of France, should have this hat and have a striped shirt on. That was, that was the stereotype figure they had in mind. But when they were interacting with these children, they told them, no, I never wear that sort of clothing. And they realized that certain things are not true. They are just painted like that. Maybe it could be the, in their tradition that they were like that, but it's not their everyday life. So this is um, making them aware of the reality. The cross-cultural communication, when they start to collaborate and talk to each other, literally, when you have emails, when then they have video conferencing, I'm talking about when the children interact with each other, collaboration. They are learning digital skills, which is one of the 21st century skills as well, indirectly, because if they want to share a PowerPoint, if they want to um, edit a photo, they have to learn a digital skill. So 
um, without them knowing, they are learning other skills to communicate in all preparing the future citizen. Um, all this, as you can see, are essentially integrated in a twinning project. The intercultural interactions exist. They promote these elements and in effect, it really contributes towards the enhancement and development of global education. Um, I'd like to see some uh, comments on this, if you'd like to say something in the chat. So uh, I can give you a break from my voice <laughs> and maybe you can give me a smiley face or not a smiley face if you're finding this um, okay or something is bothering you uh, what do you think can you say something in the chat i'll be listening out to you <laughs> yes i can see a smiley face okay i'll carry on um now this is what I, I was coming to, um, global education in each winning. The, I, what I was building up to show you the importance of global education. And after that, we could see that each winning here is a tool, a tool which is promoting global education. So if it winning is integrated into our curricula, then we would be integrating global education, which is so important in today's society. Because first of all, as we can see in the slide, it creates an intercultural awareness. The, the awareness of um, other cultures, of other people. This creates, when you are aware of certain things, this will, this will create an understanding of those people. The understanding then brings about critical reflection. And the critical reflection then, when someone is critically knows he is reflecting on it, not just with what the media wants to tell him, but he is seeing different sources, and what the actual facts are, then, then you have an informed action. And that will bring about sustainable change in the society. You might, you might say, okay, but the children are still young to, be, to bring about sustainable change in the society, but this is what education is about. We have to teach the children from an early age. As I said, this doesn't happen overnight. It has to be um, instilled within the curricula, so it's promoting this, so to say, it will bring, bring about a lot of peace if this really happens. A twinning project made my children happy. Yes, that's a very nice comment. It does, because it brings about live interaction. It's not about the teacher coming into the class and saying, listen, I'm going to teach you about the Italians, and we're going to see what, their, what they wear, what they eat, um, what their traditions are. That will be very boring for the children, very boring. Even if you take them to the internet and they might see some. But the most effective would be if they interact with these children, if they talk to these children, and that will be putting global education into context. When you put something into a context, then the learning will start happening. And obviously the most important element, the key factor for all this to be a success, is one great thing. I don't know, um, what do you think? The, key, the most important element is, can you write that in, in the chat? What you think the most important thing is? Yes, it winning is a way for children to have fun while learning. Exactly. That's it. Tolerance and communication. Very good. Exactly. But what is the most important thing? Open mindedness. What is the. There's one main factor which 
without it, and nothing of this would be happening. People, friendship, okay, okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. <laughs> so, yes, yes, I see. This is the most, the teacher. You are the most important sector, the teacher. Without the teacher, nothing of this would be possible. Teachers have a very important role in, in global education. They are the agents of change in facilitating and inspiring this enhancement and transformation. Teachers do not just teach. If they would be doing that, then um, they would not be doing their job. But they have to inspire and arouse curiosity because it's there where the learning starts happening. When children are aroused by curiosity and they start looking out for things, they are curious, they want to know, that's when they will learn. They will not learn if they are bored. <laughs> curiosity then brings about learning in a natural way. And children are natural learners. But we have to give them the right opportunities. And it is the engine of achievement. They will then be achieving. And as I was saying, to give them the right uh, um, opportunities, it's winning is just that opportunity because it's going to put, put them into a context, it's going to give them a context. The children will be very excited to meet the other children of the other class in the other country. And uh, when that happens, they will want to talk to them, they will want to, to send them an email, they will want to send them a PowerPoint. So they're going to run to the teacher, please tell me how I'm going to use PowerPoint, how I'm going to create a presentation because I want to send them this or that. And this is bringing about learning about digital skills without having to push the children and tell them, listen, today we're going to do a lesson about how we use Photoshop <laughs> because it will be very boring. As a, especially the younger they are. So this put, gives them a reason to learn. Okay. Now, challenges. Um, uh, I know that what I am saying might be a bit uh, too uh, idealistic. It might be an idealistic world, but it's good sometimes to strive or something, and then at least obtain some small things. But what are the challenges that you think you would face in your schools if you try to do these things? What are the things which are stopping you from promoting global education, from um, teaching uh, 21st century skills in this way, in the in this way? Are there any things which are you can either write in the chat? Or else go to the typing pad. I don't know if the typing pad isn't working, doesn't matter. You can write it in the chat. So I'll give you some time because I've been talking and talking. <laughs> Very interesting comments we have, Rosanne. Like yeah, the lack of technology and the integration of it meaning into the curriculum. I've done some research lately and I've been asked teachers from different countries about the challenges and these are the lack of support especially even from their colleagues that 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 was very very dominant they wanted to participate but their their colleagues weren't really interested and they didn't like it for me it's time to prepare but if it's something within the curriculum, something which is embedded and not an extra thing, then, but if it's something that you have to do completely from scratch, it would take time. So that would be a major challenge. That's what, why it's important that we, something has to be done for it to be in the curriculum. Hosan, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, regarding this subject, uh, we will have uh, in a few weeks a learning event exactly on in how to 
So maybe it may be a great opportunity to, to learn how to do it. Narrow minded speakers such as colleagues and headmasters, exactly, school administrators. Finding reliable partners, yes, there could be partners who at first are very excited, that happens to me, and then suddenly you don't hear about them anymore. <laughs> and that's a very, there's a little, <laughs> another trend that training requires extra time. It is not, uh -huh, exactly, that's why it's important, that it, it is part of the curriculum. What I say to teachers when I go around schools to make it a bit easier is that I tell them if they're going to do a teacher training project, they try to find a topic which they would still be covering, not something new, definitely not something new or out of the ordinary, and, uh, and do it just in another way. So, for example, I have a teacher who who knew she, she had to do a topic about shapes. And so she discussed with the other teacher and they decided on a time frame and they still covered the, the topic shapes, but in a way which was more interactive, obviously, and which didn't take too much extra time. And it, it proved really successful because the teacher didn't lose. Uh, uh, let me say one thing. If it's the first, it's winning project, it's always going to take some more time because when something is new, it can't be something which happens easily. So the first time you'll have to have a lot of support from, uh, from the school. And if you don't have that, it would be a bit more difficult. So the first time it could be, it could take more time. The second time round, it wouldn't. It would because you'd know what to expect, what to do, and all those things. But what I always suggest is that you find a topic which you still have to cover. Uh, if you do it winning or, or not, you still have to cover it. So in that way, you get something done in the process. Not that you just, you sort of did nothing. For, for for the head because it would have it would still have a lot of relevance to the pupils. But to have something to put on paper, I know what it means. That you have to report things and you have to write what you did. So you don't have nagging <laughs> teachers or or, or uh, head head teachers coming around and saying what are you trying to do. The technology is a problem, yes. It is a problem in many schools, unfortunately. The most challenging part is persuading. Uh -huh. Well, we're, we're trying to get there, we're trying to get there. <laughs> and parents, parents might be a problem, yes, because they don't understand what, what it involves. Great challenges for me, the interaction with parents and colleagues and the technologies. That's why certain support is important. I feel almost lonely in my school. Is it to involve Yes, I have that in my schools as well. Sometimes teachers tell me they they want to participate, but maybe their colleagues would look down on them. And that's very unfortunate. Lack of technological equipment. In many school teachers are free to confront students. Mm, maybe because they think they would know more. <laughs> But we have to use that knowledge. Connection is a problem, good internet, and lack of motivation. <laughs> we have to say how, if there's good internet, we have to think about the motivation, because that could be um, triggered by something. Technology, the lack of equal opportunities, yes, yes, is a problem. Language knowledge. Sometimes technology. Primary school do not know English well. Mm. But we are doing a pilot project in twinning at the moment where children from the same country are doing a twinning project. So there isn't a language barrier. So they can participate with the same language. And if, I think Ruth can tell us more about that. Maybe. 
Yes, those are the national uh, projects, irritating projects. Uh, but maybe they need to contact their national support service or they, uh, they, they support at national level because uh, we have also people here from the training plus countries and they may have different rules. But uh, yes, that's possible. It's now possible to, to have a training project uh, from people from the same country. Mm -hmm. I would like again to speak to the so then maybe we need to move because of the time. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So the most this is what I had found, and as you can see, they are what you are saying. The lack of support in schools. This is what I found in my research, and it it resonates exactly with what you are saying. No teacher preparation. This is something which I discovered. No, there is no teacher preparation for in student teacher programs for global education and interculturality. When teachers are being prepared, when they are still students and being prepared to become teachers, there is no formal education about how they are going to teach global education, which is very important. Today, it is very important, as you can see, as we have been seeing all along. It's something part and parcel. If we want students and our pupils to be successful citizens, successful global citizens, because as we can see, children are, are going from place to place from a very early age. So it has to be integrated in, into curricula. This is something and into the teacher programs. And obviously the lack of technical support training in use of digital tools. Now, um, this presentation will be um, passed on to you, so you can look at it more at ease. And for future use, I've put in some resources which you can read about if you're interested about this topic. This is the Global Education Network ULIP. You can have a look at that. The Partnership for 21st Century Skills in the US which have created a framework, very interesting. Um, this is a very interesting site because it is global education as um, uh, tried and tested in Australian schools. They have, in fact, a curriculum. And even in the website, there are indications of how they use it, school case studies, teaching strategies, professional learning. So it's very interesting to see how they are adopting global education. And Malala, who has a lot to say about this um, topic. Finally, to sum, let's sum up, so then we can have maybe some time for discussion. The heart of global education, as we are saying, is enabling young people to participate in shaping a better shared future for the world. This is the, the the heart of what we're, we're preparing our students for. It emphasizes the unity and interdependence of human society, developing a sense of self. This is important because children not only get to know other cultures, but they become more aware of their own cultures. And this is some, a factor which you find out during projects. During projects, they realize their own cultures. They start to, to say, Oh, oh, this is yes, this is what we do, and um, let's write about it. And that gets them to think critically about their own cultures and appreciation, not just of others. So they start from there. They have to start from their own identities and then open up to cultural diversity and affirmation, which brings about affirmation of social justice and human rights. It promotes positive values, assists students to take responsibility for their actions and see themselves as global citizens who can contribute to a more peaceful world. And finally, it's winning plays a major role in all this, as it is the tool which equips young pe people with technological skills, above all awareness of a multicultural society, but most importantly, within a context with which students can identify and make sense. Competencies which resonate with 21st century skills are stepping stones to a successful future 
in a global society. Um, uh, I'll be sharing this link, the Padlet, for not, not to discuss it now, but if you want, later on you can add to it and we can have a look later on after the seminar has ended so we can, can continue with the discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure seeing so many countries. <laughs> um, and I hope it has been useful for something, for some of you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if you'd like to add something, Ruth, or Thank you, Roman. It was time? great. Yes, it was great. <laughs> I'm not sure if you, uh, we have five minutes. We can have uh, questions mm -hmm. if you would like exactly. to ask. Yes, if you uh, like to ask some questions uh, or comments. Okay, thank okay, you. <laughs> apparently we don't have any questions. Everybody's very pleased, which is great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great, okay. Cooperation is good. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Then uh, maybe if you don't have any questions, I will take this opportunity to announce the next eTwinning Online Seminar, uh, which will be on integrating games in the classroom, a very interesting topic as well. And uh, it will be on the 19th of May. So pay attention to your desktop to apply to this seminar. About the, t the resources and uh, everything that Rosan shared with us today, uh, I will share with you, if not this evening, tomorrow morning, you will have everything in your email along with uh, an evaluation form that we would like to ask you to fill in about this seminar. Uh, also, everything will be published in the future, in the near future, in the twinning portal. So you may have access to it again or share with other colleagues or show in your school. Uh, we will be very happy if you use this as a resource. Right, Rosan? Exactly. Um, I just wanted to remind them about uh, if they want to write to me, in my, my email is in the first slide. I can put okay. it in, in the chat. I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will put it. Don't worry. Okay. So they may see it. Okay. So it's here. Uh -huh. You can uh, write to me if you want any questions or, or whatever, just co mm -hmm. communicate. And they can uh, continue to participate in the Titan pads and, uh, and the Padlet, right, Hosan? Yes, exactly. We, we, I, okay. I look forward to looking at the Padlet. <laughs> <laughs> and see what you're thinking. It would be nice to see your comments. Maybe in future I could uh, contact you for any future research I might be doing, because I, I intend to carry on some research in this area. <laughs> that would be great. That would be fantastic. So yes. again, thank you, Rosan, for such an interesting uh, seminar. Okay. And thank you, everyone. You were great. You were a great audience, very communicative and uh, very uh, interesting, with very interesting topics. So I hope to see you soon. I will uh, stop the recording now, and I will leave the session open for two, three minutes, and then I will close it. And I hope to see you in the near future in another learning event or a training online seminar. So thank you, everyone. And bye-bye.